turned out a little better than this one's a little better than this one I think but oh well they're done so I had quite a bit of wool just from whenever I finished a finger I went around the hand so I don't want to bulk these up too much but if you do, didn't have that then you would take a thin piece and you would go around the wrist and then from the wrist skip over to the palm and then just go around the palm one time just to smooth everything out um, these guys didn't necessarily need it but it still does help smooth out the look of it and then just remember I'm using a thin um, uh, like a 38 or 40 because um, you just you need a thin gauge just to get between all those wires. So I'm just going around the wrist, and then I'm going to go around the palm of the hand a little bit. if you can unlock the camera angle and just scoot it up to show the wax <laughs> show our fancy setup um, yes shall I zoom in yeah, just to see it it's just a coffee mug warmer and a little ceramic cup and black wax and then I like to use this little wooden thing to put it on. You could use a toothpick or a skewer. Um, some kind of dipstick. Some kind of dipstick. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Okay. Now I'm bumpy. Okay. Alright. So I like to work my way from the ends in. So let's get the let's get the tail wrapped and the legs and the arms. Um, and I'm actually going to use the um, medium gray next. I like to wrap the tail in gray because then it's going to get white and black stripes. And so if you use gray, there's not too much color pollution. If I wrapped it in off-white and then tried to put black stripes on, every time I stab through, white would poke through the black. But this way, just gray is poking through. Um, which isn't as bad. So I'm going to take um, about a quarter of this of this eight inch piece of of gray that I have and just pull a quarter of it off in a nice long strip and then just wrap the tail. This doesn't have to be super tight but you still want it consistent and even. And then, actually, on the thigh, we want a really thin piece because we just want to build this little hock here. So we just want a thin piece to build that, that hock. So I'm going to pull another thin strip. And I'm going to split this in half. So one... Um, quarter by four inch piece will do each leg. So starting on the thigh, I'm going to come down and I'm going to exaggerate this bend at the back of the foot to a 90 degrees. And I'm going to come around from the um, top of this of the leg here and go right to the foot and do a figure eight. I'm going to do that two or three times. So that's two. I'm going to do it one more time. And then I'm going to continue down the foot. And I never wrap right around the point. It always goes from, whoops, my um, wool broke. And now I just want a thin amount just to blend into the natural black and kind of disappear like that. 
And when you do that um, figure eight there on that bent angle, it creates a little triangle like that, which is great for joints, for little animal joints. So I'm going into the other room when I need to cough. Excuse me. <laughs> if you hear it. I don't know. They might not hear it. That time of year, you it know? It is that time of year. All right. At least it's sunny today. What? <laughs> no, it's not. Think sunny. I hear a truck. Are you going to bark? Mm, I'm trying not to. <laughs> All right, and then let's put a little bit of, no, I'm going to move right to the off-white now, because their, le their legs kind of go from their little black hands right to the gray, so I'll show you how I build up. I just go white to the natural black, and then you can put a little blender in between, in between the two. All right, so we need to start building... <laughs> Many, many unfinished raccoons around here. We need to start building them up with the off-white core wool. So first we'll do the, the arms. I'm going to take a about a four inch piece of core wool and I'm going to split it into quarters lengthwise. It's really thick. So. so now we have four pieces. And I'm just going to go down each, each arm. Like so. And then just let it, just let it end before the wrist. You don't want his wrist to get fat. You want his wrist to stay skinny. So if it's too much, pull it off. I'm letting more of it build up towards the top of the arm. Plus it just took me a while to get it anchored there. And then as I get down here, I've got too much, so I just pull it off. I want it to taper to nothing. Okay, now we need to take the off-white to the tops of the legs, build up these these thighs here. So we need a longer piece this time. Just set aside your little uh, remaining four inch pieces. You might use them. So more like a six inch piece. Again, split in quarters. And we want to do that same, this time with a rounded um, angle, not a sharp angle. We want to do that same idea of crisscrossing, so I'm going right, kind of skipping the center of the foot and going right to the bottom. And then if I go around the top and I do that again, what it does is it puts the wool into this, the wires out here, but it puts the wool into this meaty part of the thigh and then in the end you just go right around and then I like to really felt this flat you don't want it to get too um, log shaped you want it to get kind of flat the other side So I have two jokes. They kind of go together. Okay. Please nobody write in, call, 
email, Facebook message me. It's horrible. But it's all that's out there. Why did the raccoon cross the road? I don't know. Why? He didn't. He got... <laughs> He got hit by a car. <laughs> it's so true. It's terrible. It's funny because it's true. They're everywhere. It's so sad. It's terrible. <laughs> but you're laughing. <laughs> okay, next one. What, what did the raccoon say in his will? See, they go together. Uh, I don't know what. Leave it to Beaver. <laughs> Okay, enough dead raccoon. We'll go back to facts. That's all we got. Okay. Okay, we'll go back to... Back to wool. So, set your six-inch pieces aside because you can't use them right now. <laughs> but you will. Because now we need a nice long... We need, like, nine-inch pieces. So, again, I'm going to split it into quarters. Because we got to wrap the body now. And you don't want to piddle with little short pieces. So the first one, I'm going to start right behind the um, arms here, the front front legs, and I'm going to do my um, crisscross on the chest. So I go around the body one time to get it anchored. I already did that, but I'll do it again. Try not to squeeze the triangle totally closed. And then I'm going to go over a shoulder and under the opposite armpit. So came around, went over the shoulder, under the opposite armpit. And now I need to do the same thing on the other side. So I go over the back. Now I'm going to go under this armpit and over the opposite shoulder. And that just just puts a crisscross on the chest. Um, puts the wool there. You're not wrapping around the arms at all. You're, you're sticking to this chest area. And then any extra wool, just wrap around the body just to keep everything symmetrical. This is an awkward direction for me. Okay, and then your second piece, you're just going to wrap um, wrap around the body. Just start getting wool on there. You're not pulling super tight. Mm -mm, not pulling super tight, but I'm keeping it nice and consistent. And the reason you don't bother pulling super tight is because you got to build this up. So you're not trying to keep it really skinny like a little arm. So we still have two pieces, so I'm going to put one more on here. Kind of start to concentrate it towards the back a little bit. You want them to get a little bit um, a little bit wider as they come back. This one's not doing it so much, but I'll show you. Now, this well, let's put this one on too, make them a little fatter. And like I said, I'm going to start at the front, but let more of it build up on his back. Just felt that so it stays. And then remember those two six inch pieces that we just set aside left over from wrapping the thighs. Um, if you don't have them, just pull more. It was a quarter of a six inch length. We want to we want to bring all of this together, so it's a little bit too skinny in here. So to bring it together, I'm going to start on the back, just lay it over the back. I'm just going to go around the thigh one full time and return to the back, and that just smooths out that that area. You have to some felting to do here because that was all just loose wool. And then we got to do the other one. Start on the back. Go completely around the top of the thigh and return to the back. We're almost to the point where we're done wrapping. We've got to do the head. Okay. Oh. Did you get that? Your fur up your nose? The fur up my nose part. Raccoon fur. Okay. Let's build the head a little bit. 
So we need about a six inch piece of core wool. And we're gonna split that into quarters. And I just start at the base of the net. First time I just wanna go around the wire. When I get to the that half inch nose bend, I want to make sure it stays pretty skinny. So I'm pull I'm drafting it out so that it's more not quite such a big chunk. And I really don't want it to get any bigger than that. That nose looks great. <laughs> looks like something already. Okay. Now I'm going to reestablish that that little loop in the head there because I want to use that same technique that we did on the thigh to build up the wool in here so that we start to get a little bit more thickness towards the back of the head. Fox, uh, raccoons are a little bit like foxes in the shape of their head where it goes from the muzzle is a little bit different shaped. If you look at it from the top or bottom, it's a triangle. A fox is a little bit more tight, tight in here, but they they're similar in that they go from skinny to poof, like all this forehead and cheeks. They have a lot, a lot of poof. So I see a triangle, like I said here, at the tip of the nose, and then I see a triangle here in the overall shape of the face. Um, so we want to start to build this back of the head up. So with the second six inch piece, I'm just going to make it nice and smooth. So now it's more like eight inches. I'm going to start around the neck again, but this time I'm going to go around the back of the head or top of the neck, come through the center and go right to this little forehead right here. And I'm going to keep doing that. And that puts the wool in this, almost creates like a herringbone pattern. And I think we need to do it one more time. It's a little, so that was two six inch pieces on the neck and head. Now we have two more. I'm just going to use one more, I think. Just want to build up the base of the neck a little bit. Come up here. And then just round out this, this head. That time I pretty much just went around. That's good. Okay, let's do a little wrap at the top of the arms just to thicken them up a little bit. So I have this last six inch piece. I'm going to use three inches on the top of each arm. I'm just going to start on the shoulder, go around the arm, and return to the shoulder. I always like to lay them down and stab like from the inside of the leg out. So like on the hind legs, I lay them down like this and I stab this way. It just gives you a really firm support for it. And then I tack down that extra fluff. Raccoons don't have much of a chest. They're, um, it, it almost kind of just like disappears in there. But I like this part of making their, um, their, they have a lot of extra like skin or fur or something. So they get all, their limbs get all enveloped in this extra, um, extra fur. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I like, I like doing that part. So what I like to do is I kind of work from light to dark. They, they're kind of like white on their belly 
and then as they go towards their feet, they get darker. So what I like to do is lay, him, lay his little arm out, and then I'll take some off-white coral wool, and I just stack it up, like, I restacked it because it was too long. I wanted it to be a little more compact. And I just felt it on there and let the fringe, just felt the center onto the arm and let the fringe stay splayed out. Then I'll take some oatmeal, the next color, and do that. And then a little bit of light gray. And then maybe even a little tiny bit of medium gray right near the right near his wrist there. Kind of looks like my joke. <laughs> All flat. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Tiny bit of medium gray, tiny bit, I just let the amounts increase a little bit with each tiny bit of gray. Actually, his top of his arm stays pretty gray, so I won't, I won't go light up here, I'll just stick with the gray. So the light is more on the, his underside. So now when we put the pelt on, it'll just blend into this all of this fluff like that. And then you can, you know, you can shape it a little bit. You can kind of stab the taper the end in a little bit more so it's not quite such a fuzz bomb. And then on the the hind legs, well I'll go ahead and do this so you can see it again. So I put a nice chunk of off-white right across, about to the elbow. <laughs> I'm laughing at my little dog, he's walking around. Milo! <laughs> <clears throat> and then a little bit of oatmeal. Milo, what? <laughs> Get out of the trash. Like Don't call it. me out. <laughs> I'm calling you out on YouTube. <laughs> now you're all shaking the camera. You're very busy. Oh, look at me. There you go. He looks like he's ready to fly. And then the light gray. Raccoons aren't, they're not complex to me, but they they're just really fun because they have, I think so, because they have all these cool shapes that are so unique to them. I feel like a squirrel and a chipmunk and a, even a mouse and a, they're pretty similar, but, okay. Oh, he's like got a, he's <laughs> like got the flamingo poofs. <laughs> he needs his little, uh, he's ready to dance. Cause that, what are those things called? Castanets? No, what are they called? Castanets. Cast <laughs> you are what are castanets? <laughs> so it's like, like a Costanza. character on, on Seinfeld. <laughs> All right, so on his back legs, I just put the off-white, like a cross. And then it's pretty much when we build the pelt, going to get covered up. You could put a little bit of light gray here. 
little bit of light gray here. And then when we flip them over, we'll do the same on this side. I don't totally want to lose his little foot joint. Okay. We're getting there. We're really getting there. Because now we pretty much just have to do the pelt and make the face. Okay, so let's lay a little bit more off-white coral across the body, just like that. And then if you want to put a little bit of white, they're not super bright white, so I don't put a lot of white, but just like a little bit of white across that. And now we have all this fringe poking out the sides, which is great because when we put the pelt on, I really like to leave these pelts fringy here. This is the one I just made. So it all, this is the fringe on the bottom, the pelt comes around the top and it all blends together. You need your little toes made, someone didn't love you enough to make your toes. Okay. Let's work on the face a little bit. Um, I think it's good to get more of the face details done before you do the pelt because that way the pelt can come on and actually help um, blend everything that you did on the head together. So I'm going to use the um, the Zoli tool to make some of these shapes. If you don't have one, you can find a pencil will work, or um, you know, a ruler is about the same width as this. Um, but basically, we use this tip and this tip. Uh, you can make these triangular shapes on your stab it too, just by you know stabbing the triangle and folding the wool in. But I like to make the chin on this end and. Like I said, I, I don't find them to be a real bright white, so I just use off-white. And I've got about a half inch by three inch piece here. And I'm going to go around the um, stick end before I crisscross onto the point. And then I'll just crisscross there again. And then when you slide that off, it has a little bit of give to it, so we can needle felt it flatter. Not too much. I don't want to. I don't want to felt it too much before I put it on. And I'm just going to stab back on this tip a little bit to round it out and make a little ghost shape. And this will be the chin. Oh, I got some gray in it. Pull out my other colors out of here. Okay, and then the chin just goes underneath, just back from the nose because the muzzle, the two muzzle pieces are going to come right into this area as well. So just tack it on for now. I'm using a four, uh, 36 gauge to really just get it stuck on there. Looks like that. So that's this piece. And now we're going to make two triangles that get put on each side. And remember those, if you still have them, we had a three to four inch in the very beginning. What were we wrapping? The front arms. We still had two pieces. This is about the amount you want. And I'm going to use, so a four inch piece split into quarters is what these were. I'm going to use this end of the stick because I want to make a really nice wide triangle. And so now I'm going to go around that tip. Just try to make it as consistent as possible. Felt it a little bit and 
do it again. Pulling it out so it stays smooth and thin. If you just angle that, it will stay on that tip nicely. If you don't have the Zoli tool, it looks like this. You're going to use a slightly different shape. You're going to use a not so long, same amount of wool, but more like a two inch square. And you're going to draw the triangle and then fold the wool in. So you basically draw like a little house shape. This shape, actually. You draw that shape. That one ended up a little wide. Okay, so to put these on, I just take the point, and with a stronger needle, I want to tack it under the nose, and then work my way back. And all this extra just becomes cheeks, really. Now, this is where this project starts to take a little bit of fussing over. So you've got to make the correct shapes, but then you've got to spend a little bit of time really sculpting them into place. And what I want to encourage them to do is make, from the tip of the nose back, um, a triangle shape. So I'm going to flatten him out and really get his head down. And using the needles, make it do that. going to take some more stabbing, but let's get the next piece in place so we can see what we need to do. I'm going to use the light gray core, and I'm just going to pull about a two inch piece off of it, like that. And then I'm going to take the edge of my tool and put it in the center and just make sure it folds over nice and, nice and tight, and then stab it along there. So I just created a taco shape. Just simply fold it in half, stab it a little bit, not too much. You don't want to flatten it out. And now this rolled edge is going to go right at the bridge of the nose. And this helps to create the volume of the back of his head. So I'm going to set it down. I have to lean in. I'm sorry if I'm in the looks okay. camera. We are pretty zoomed. Oh, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to stab that rolled edge down. Like that. I'm trying to decide if I want it to... I think when I mean my other one, I did this first. Let me pull a little bit of this off. These cheek pieces are just a little bit long. Okay. And then I'm just going to let it blend into the white cheek piece a little bit. Not too much. I just, I don't want to super define that line between the two. And then this part of the poof just comes back over his head. And again, I'm not going to stab too, too much. I'm just going to let it tack it down. But then as I put the rest of the details on the face, I'll sculpt it some more. Now I want to put some white over the bridge of the nose to blend these, these seams that we got from our pieces. So I'm going to take a little bit of white and a little bit of core and just blend them together. So it's something kind of in between. 
doesn't take much. And I'm going to lay that over the nose and stab it on. And that's going to blend the, um, the two muzzle pieces. Now can you really see that triangle there? That's what I'm going for. Just tuck the fringe around here. And then they have a little gray on the bridge of their nose, so I'm going to use the meat, the light gray. And just take a little, little fringy bit of it and Stick it down on the bridge of the nose, just starting at the black, coming back. Be sure to look at some pictures. You're going to be able to make a lot of decisions um, by looking at pictures, and they're all different. Like you said, there's eight different yeah, varieties. Five, I didn't know that. Six something. <laughs> So I like having a little bit of light above their mask. They they do. They get a little bit lighter here, and it um, it makes their mask even more um, gives it even more contrast as opposed to just the black on the gray. So see, this one has it too. This lightness. So before I put the black mask on, I'm going to put a little bit of light up there. I think this time I'll use the oatmeal. So it's just slightly lighter than the gray. I'll just take a little poof, fold it in half, set the folded side towards the inside, and give him almost like you're putting a little eyebrow on him. This one has a little bit more, I can tell. So right about where an eyebrow would be, just get a little bit of a lighter color on there. Now with the black, we're going to take our real black, our dyed black black, and you're going to pull, just grab the end and pull it two times. It should give you, you know, about a two by half inch piece. And then Pull that apart pretty, you gotta really grab it and restack it, and that's gonna break it down into its shortest, shortest pieces. So this is before and this is after. And then I'm gonna fold it. And you can you can keep folding it if you want like a really distinguished shape, or you can just fold it in half. And let the fringe kind of come out the side like that. I think that's kind of cute. That's the way I did this one. Um, so I think that's what I'll do. So the folded end becomes the inside. Whoops, my raccoon got all stuck in our fluff over here. So I gotta lean in again. Normally I would work with this, like with my face right up in this. And then where you stab it, look at pictures and you can really define the shape of the mask. And you can leave this as fringy as you want or you can really you know, tuck it all in. So take this piece, fold it, and then stick it on. Okay, and then we can play with that more. He looks like a little raccoon. Okay, let's lay some off-white and white blend 
across the bottom of his neck here. So I'm just going to take the two, blend them together a little bit, and just go across the neck and then let it meet up with these pieces here. I don't want to totally eliminate his little mouth, um, this little line here, so I don't, I don't go up that high. Now it's starting to look creepy, like I'm, <laughs> like I'm doing some sort of awful science experiment. And while we have them like this, we can take a little bit of um, natural black and make a real thin, real thin line and define that little mouth shape. Speaking of raccoon mouths, what a fact. Raccoons have a very large array of sounds. Okay. They purr. Oh. They whistle. Ooh. They growl. Yes, I've heard that. They hiss. Mm -hmm. They scream. And apparently they even whinny. Wow. Oh, we're going to have to look for a YouTube video of that. Can I help you, Jennifer? <laughs> They're not ready yet. <laughs> Trying to show me sign language while we're filming. Ah, my white wire's sticking out. I'll have to. They're very busy working I know. to make this happen. They're making for the people. raccoon kits. It's good. Okay. He needs ears and maybe a little bit more wool up here. I think I'll do that after the ears. And then a pelt and then some stripes on the tail, and we're, we're so... Mm -hmm.